put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. I'll, I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling something... This is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Ooh, the tension. Obviously, Yuri first. Okay. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Look, this one might even be better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did, a, you did a good job explaining. I really wanted to tr try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. Palms are sweaty, knees weak, mom's spaghetti. Uh, <laughs> I'm not used to this. You used to what? I don't know. It's fine. It's fine, take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for my- or, I really only write for myself. And besides, people just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. Oh, here we go. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, hungry, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon is taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic. Palovian conditioning. I slice the bread. And I feel, feed myself again. I'm I'm getting some sin sinister overtones. Maybe it's just the knife. I don't know. <laughs> uh, um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem's about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid in imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. Involving knives? <laughs> it's, it's those sort of things that I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? But because they're embarrassing and people would make fun of me. Do you have anything like that, Luke? Well, well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't earned, learned to embrace my own weirdness, I'd probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a bit now, but I'm glad you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening... There really aren't many people like you, Luke. That's exaggerating a little bit. It's just... It's just how I feel. I never thought I'd, I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. 
<sighs> okay, moving on. Uh, I suppose we'll go in the same order we did before. What was it? Natsuki was second? Yeah. Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better either. Phew. Huh? Phew what? Ah, uh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck I'll take as a win. I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you- Wait. <laughs> maybe- <laughs> Wait, maybe that was a compliment? Ah, glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing, and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh, something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Eh, yeah, you think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone or so or fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Uh, that was a little unnecessary. But I think, but think of it this way: if it weren't for me, she probably would fly away, like the letting go of a balloon. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. <coughs> Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her sing her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. <laughs> One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends like to start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider levels. lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. <laughs> oh, wow. Pleasant. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. Hope you don't think that was the best I can do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I don't have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. It helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like everyone would agree with the subject that this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... That, that doesn't matter. It, can't, it can be about anything. <laughs> I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something you're afraid of people find out. They'll make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn respect for others liking weird things. Huh, that's funny. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make people make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, it's not like I would judge her or anything. <laughs> the classic, it's not like I would blank, or it's not like I blank or anything. Uh, Natsuki has trouble finding words. I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff. I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well... Uh, well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like the writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, con conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, so look forward to it. Okay. <clears throat> Wait a second. I'm thinking. On the poem select screen, there were only three of the girls, right? I don't think there were ever all four. Maybe at the very beginning there were all four? But I feel like... There are fewer on that screen, which might mean that, like, I can't make poems 
that are dedicated to one of them. Only three of them. I, I don't know if that's for sure. I guess I'll find out. Because there are four, in to four girls in total, but if there are only three that I can make poems suited towards, then one of them is, like, left out or whatever. I mean, I'm guessing that would be Sayori because she's, like, the friend. So, that's probably not the date. I don't know. Oh, I like this one, Luke. It has some nice feelings in it. Ah, oh, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. <laughs> that's not very helpful, you know. I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. That's why I just go by my heart. It makes me feel things that it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Or, then I- <laughs> I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Oh, that's me. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't think what kind of writing- uh, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> oh, maybe, I guess that would be why. I, I think she's the one you can't do writing suited towards because she doesn't have a preference. Ugh, why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Oh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet! Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself for once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well... I don't really know what you mean, but I'll, I'll try to keep it in mind. Well... Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm... I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a bit of both. It's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet! Yeah! I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. <laughs> I'll make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that is unexpectedly poetic. poetic. Yeah, it is. Maybe I'm getting... Or maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Luke. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. Then I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me a lo lots of friends, each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes the bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets of hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some... some more. Or, could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done. I open up, and in come my friends. They come in such a hurry. Do they want to see... do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, shards all over the floor. They are supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 inside my head. Whoa, that, that's kind of, that's kind of, uh, holy crap. <laughs> Seor, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but, I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings lately. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe it's because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, and you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like that was, I was meant to express myself this way. Even if it helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic! You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep up writing until I die! Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Sayori's have always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. 
Hmm. Who should I po show my poems to next? Well, it's Monica, obviously. Hi again, Luke. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I gave my poem to Monica. All right. This one's good. Feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, have you been fi finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on inside that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just mean that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that, you must be pretty into her. Huh? You completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. 